my favourite Bond films, The Spy Who Loved Me, and that's, that's another instance we were talking about yesterday, slightly different where you shot yourself in The Protectors. Mm -hmm. On The Spy Who Loved Me, in the, the big see, scene at the end, I think you die about three or four times. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, we played, you know, goodies and baddies, and, and uh, so and with Shane was there. Uh, Shane was there, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we, um, and Big Bill Reed. Um, so, uh, Big Bill Reed, I just... Uh, we were, uh, there was an uh, escalator and they wanted somebody to fall down the escalator and we were running up at the time <coughs> and uh, Bill uh, we said, what are you going to do Bill? We said, I'll come down, I'll come down. So he got shot and he's got his rifle and we, he's coming into us and we're running up, he's rolling, falling down with his rifle. We all <laughs> dived over the side. He was a, he was a lunatic. But we were getting blown up and um, there's, we were three guys on, the, on uh, the, the submarines were in the bottom, and we had five foot of water. It's come 36 feet. You're getting blown up and shot, and you've got to come off 36 feet into five foot of water. So you can't go in head first or feet first because you'd probably hit the, the railings of where the, the uh, submarines were being pulled along. So yeah, you had to hit flat, and um, uh, Greg, Greg Powell and uh, Terry Plummer, who were big guys, were finished up when they hit the water. It, they were black and blue all the way up their side. So you hit, I was lighter, so I just hit flat and I was okay. But that, yeah, it's a great movie to work on. And it, when they blew it apart in the end, we were running for real because it, uh, there were some <coughs> heavy explosions in there. And then on Moonraker, you, bizarrely, doubled for Jaws. Mm. <coughs> So funny about that. <laughs> um, yeah, they, um, they they were shooting in France, and they they wanted me to, to jump uh, jump from cable car to cable car. But it was 16 feet across, and just to stand there and and jump 16 feet was impossible. So the only way I could work out is that I put a mini trampoline on the top of the cable car this side, so that I could jump on it and be propelled over the other side. But to do that, I had to stand on the cables at the top. So I'm standing up on the cables, ready to go, and the, uh, 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 Arthur Worcester, the director, said, Paul, I said, yeah. He said, have you got your teeth? I said, teeth? Of course I've got my teeth. He said, no, have you got Jaws teeth? I said, no, I haven't got Jaws teeth. Who's got Jaws teeth? So he said, well, we might see them as you're, as you're jumping across. I said, all right, well, give me a quarter of an orange peel and some um, cigarette paper. Um, a silver paper from a cigarette pack, I'll make up a pair of uh, some teeth. So I said, okay, so the guys are handing them down and I make the up. I say, okay, you ready? Yeah. I put them in and I've got caps. So you imagine what silver paper's like in your mouth. So, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And I said, what's you waiting for? And I said, oh, we're, we're turning out, we're just waiting for you to jump. I said, well, tell me, tell me to jump. I jump. So I put it back in and I jumped, lucky enough, I made the other side. I did stump the toe on the railing the other side, but uh, yeah, I got across. It was, uh, and we had a, a miniature, a small uh, Roger Moore and a small lady, so that when I landed, I looked like seven foot three yeah. and uh, they looked normal. So, yeah, that was yours. I think your biggest Bond films, personally, when you became, actually became stunt coordinator on the Timothy Dalton films. Yes, yes. And we were talking about uh, you know, finding a right match for, for you know, a stunt guy to work that, that you know, is a match for the actor. And I think on those two films, you are an absolutely superb double for Timothy Dalton. You, I, I swear, you cannot tell mm. when it's Tim, when it's you. Yeah, no, I did have more hair then. <laughs> Uh, yes, I did double him uh, a few times on that. Um, yes, uh, when I got the, the call, I thought we were going to get um, um, Pierce Brosnan. Yeah. Um, and Timothy came in at the last minute. And so I hadn't met him until I got to uh, Malta. Uh, and he came out. I was already out there doing setting up the second unit uh, for the skydivers and everything to come in. Um, so we met and... Um, we decided that we had four minutes in the opening sequence to prove that he is a new Bond. Um, so he wanted to do as much of the action as I would allow him to do. Um, 
So I, I sort of assessed him and I figured that he was sensible enough, uh, he wasn't a young idiot, um, and I could trust him to hang on if I told him, you know, uh, this is what you're going to have to do to, to, to prove it. On, on the top of the truck, um, I could have wired him on and he couldn't have moved and he would have been safe. Um, but um, I put handholds on there for him so he, was, he could be on handholds and when he landed on top of the truck, uh, you, I don't know if you ever saw the film, but there was a brilliant actor uh, on it by some gates and a as he runs down, um, this actor shoots him and he says, and he just runs and jumps on top of the, the jeep and the actor turned to the camera and said, hold on, you're dead. That was me. <laughs> you don't remember that, did you? They never do. <laughs> so yes, so I'm on there and he's got to then go past me and jump onto the top of the, the, the um, truck. For that bit, I had a, a, a French uh, double for him. It was very good. Uh, and at the time it, so that the Jeep, <clears throat> he couldn't see the Jeep. Um, so at the time it, uh, and run backwards, so the jeep went back and he went back, and to time it so that as it appeared, he jumped on it. Um, and one time he jumped too soon and he just about hit the windscreen and just held on. But from then, from then on, it was, uh, we had to put Timothy up there in close-ups, but we still had to go down the, the hill. Um, uh, so I said, you know, I'll trust you if you, you know, hold on, because uh, and when the camera was on that side, I put a platform on the other side of the Jeep and I was on there, I was wired on, and every time he put his leg over too far on this side, I would whack him back to make sure that he didn't come over too far. So I was ready to catch him if anything happened. Um, and he, we went all the way down there and he was able to move along and do the, the ripping of the thing and start to go in. Um, and then we had two, just two legs sticking up, which were animated legs, went like that. And for doing all the crashing when we went through the stalls and going down the hill. But if you watch carefully, you see me about three times or four times. Because I didn't have enough stunt men, I was stepping in for myself. I had people jumping out of the way of the Jeep going through. I jump over one wall while it, the, the Jeep goes through a stall. Then you see me run across a road as it goes past and it takes a door off another car. And then you see me at the last little bit where the, the uh, it goes through the wall and uh, goes over the uh, over the cliff. Um, so yeah, we uh, it was a hell of a sequence to do uh, to establish that Timothy Dalton was the new Bond, and I think it worked purely uh, <coughs> because he's he's a good actor um, and he was convincing. Uh, and when he was uh, when he was angry, you knew he was angry, uh, and it, it was a, he was just a good actor, I think. And I think it was successful. He, he, he could have done more. Uh, it was only the time uh, between the Living Daylights. Uh, after the Living Daylights, there was a, a discussion about uh, who owned the rights to, to Bond. Uh, and it went on for five years. And they, all, they wanted to change at that point. So they got uh, new people. Yeah. Well, right up to date with the Bond franchise, of course, you made an appearance in Spectre as well. Yes. You wouldn't see me because I was on the cutting room floor. <laughs> At the end of the Spectre, uh, when um, Chris Bolts gets into a Rolls Royce and he drives around uh, the other side of the Thames, comes across the bridge and gets in a helicopter and he goes up and he's looking down at the um, uh, MI5 building, he presses the button and it blows up. Um, that was me driving around, I was his uh, chauffeur and, uh, uh, and they, they cut it out. Sad, because I was really good. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I was. So yeah, it was good. There are plenty of other things we could be talking mm. about, but I'm, I'm, I'm mindful of the time and wanting to give the audience a, an opportunity to ask questions that I'm sure they're burning to need to ask you.